as Rinalda said, I, my, my beginnings in the labor movement uh, actually started on health and safety. And uh, I was at uh, Sydney today with the, with the services, and so I wasn't sure with you what I shared with them. Is, uh, uh, when I was working in the shipyards, uh, the, the working conditions were far from good, uh, uh, both in hazard, just general hazards, but also with some of the chemicals, smoke conditions and whatnot. And I was coming home, I didn't realize I whined as bad as I did. And I come home and uh, one day and whining about the smoke conditions and the tanks and, and Judy said, well, isn't there a union there? And I said, yes, and they're not doing anything about it and they don't have a committee. And she said, no, 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 I understand that from all your whining. She said, but uh, don't they hold meetings? And I said, yes, and she said, and how many you gone to? And the answer was pretty obvious and she said, so if you want to get changed, get involved. I shared that uh, today because we, uh, we were at the CUPE convention and we had a, a lot of activists there and I, when I look at the challenges that we have in front of us today, uh, even after all these years of, of improving and, and making our workplace uh, safe for our young people coming into, uh, I challenge those activists to become health and safety activists too because uh, we do have opportunities but it, it, it's, act, it's some things that we have to take on together. Uh, I was uh, involved in establishing, I was on the Maco Committee when we got the first Occupational Health and Safety Act in the province. And friends, it's been an uphill struggle uh, almost every year. We, a lot of uh, think just because we get a, our, our, our legislation in place, then that's the end of it. And uh, it's far from the end. Uh, I, I, there's a, a lot of issues uh, uh, that we have to take on, and uh, we do have, and. Uh, as already mentioned, we've had 19 fatalities and in, in this province again this year. And when you're talking to some within, within government and some within workers' comp, because we work fairly close with them, and we do have a good relationship with them, uh, though uh, they, they certainly don't go far enough or, or we don't believe they do in protecting workers, uh, we, they'll break that down, that 19 down. I won't break it down into the numbers that they, they refer to because they tell us that uh, there was a uh, a uh, smaller portion of that were acute uh, uh, fatalities and, and the others were chronic. Uh, their version of chronic is that there, there were other medical issues or medical issues at play that, and I think I've even read them state that may or may not have been related to the workplace. Our view on this is very simple, that uh, because of the, well, what we're dealing with in our workplaces today, with the substance that we deal with in our workplaces today, with the toxins we deal with, with the unknown gases we deal with, and with the stress uh, that we have in many of our workplaces, that if it's a respiratory disease, then, then we consider that it's, it's, part, it's attributed to the workplace of that worker died at work. Heart attack, any type of industry could bring on the stress on what we're seeing in workplaces today. Uh, not only the stress of the workplace, but uh, that, that with, with issues on, on l reduced workforces, that's putting a lot on a lot of workers. And so there's a, we, we don't accept that it, just because it wasn't something that fell on somebody, that it's not a direct work-related fatality. And uh, so we, we won't use their, their defining. We also had in this province last year tw over 25,000 workers that were injured, 6,000 of which uh, were injured uh, serious enough to, to uh, receive workers' comp benefits. And to date, uh, we're, we're seeing uh, already a number of, of fatalities and various injuries. Uh, a lot of workers uh, are dying at home or suffering at home with illnesses that their doctors don't even know if it's work-related. Uh, we come into, into substances and chemicals, uh, uh, new chemicals almost on a daily basis. I know uh, we have WEMIS and, and we're supposed to have training. I'm not going to do it here tonight, but there's a lot of places, a lot of times we go out when we're talking on educationals and we ask how many people have had the WEMIS training and for the Workplace Hazardous Material uh, Information System. Hands will go up. How many have had the workplace specific? Fewer hands go up. And then how many have had their updated training and even fewer hands are going up. So we're not meeting the requirements that, that we have by ensuring that, that workers are being trained and that's an employer responsibility. Today, uh, before going too much further again, I, I, I do have to say this is an emotional day because uh, uh, I've had friends uh, or, and co-workers die at, at work. And, and so, you know, our feelings, our, our thoughts and our prayers go out to the families, co-workers and, and friends of, of those that have lost. 
the healing is long uh, when you when when you lose someone in your workplace and the memories are forever. But now more than ever, we have to take on the challenge. And I and I, I guess I say that every year or so. And I, I'm I'm like some of these commercials that you hear, the new and improved, uh, that we we cannot rest on our laurels to think that everything is fine, that we've gone far enough. Because there's new issues in our workplaces on a daily basis. We need to make changes and, and, and make workplaces better in our province, in our nation, and in, in the world. We, when you look at what's happening today, uh, and last year at this time, uh, we talked about the, the thousands of workers that had died in, in the Bangladesh fires. Those are not foreign companies that are running generally for that, or in foreign products. Those are products that are on our workshelves. And so we have a responsibility to try to, to outreach to ensure that those workers, they don't have the opportunity that we have even to have unions as we have, to have the opportunity to speak out in the public that we have. And so we, we have a responsibility to, uh, to speak out on, on behalf of that. And if we know some of the companies are North American companies, we have to take issue with them when they're on the home grounds here. A very serious concern uh, provincially, and, and I, I did say we have a good working relationship. Uh, with the workers, with the Department of Labor, and, and with workers' comp, and I'm very fearful where the government's going on this, on occupational health and safety. They, they established a new department in this budget, uh, the new uh, Department of Business. And I'm not anti-business, uh, because without business we don't have jobs. But I was on with the uh, president of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business on, on CBC, talking about issues in the budget. And he was praising up the Department of Business because he said, at last, after many years of lobbying, we, and, and concern over red tape regulations, we have a department that's going to be able to deal with them. The two top red tape regulations that are of concern to them is occupational health and safety regulations and worker comp. Those are not red tape regulations, friends and brothers and sisters. Those are regulations that are put in place to protect workers, to give them a better chance of returning home at the end of the day. And workers' comp is not a red tape regulation, it's an insurance policy that protects workers and ensures if they are injured, at least they get some form of, of support, of financial support and, and medical taken care of. These guys forget uh, too quickly that they, they could be the recipients of, of, of class action lawsuits. And, and anyway, I, I, I'm very fearful of where the government's going. Equally is what the federal government's done, as you mentioned earlier. They, the federal government, and, and I, I want to put the emphasis upon how important that is, the federal government is undermining the health and safety legislation regulations for public sector or federal sector or federal regulated workers. Of concern to us, uh, and, and we all should be a concern, I mean, because uh, clearly an injury one to one is an injury to all. But when we were fighting to look, to try to get occupational health and safety legislation in this province, we held up part two of the Canada Labor Code and talked about half the workers in this province are, are under federal legislation or close to it. And they had protection under the federal code that we did not have in Nova Scotia. They had the right to refuse, they had the right to know, they had the right to participate. Now, the Harbour government is undermining or taking that away. My fear is we're going to have the reverse argument with government now by saying the federal government's not providing it, why should we have to put that burden on employers? So we have to be very, very vigil um, on where we're going in this province and in this country when it comes to occupational health and safety. The statistics are very alarming uh, on where we're going. And we are, I guess I have to come to some of the headway we're making, uh, because it's been mentioned uh, by most people now, uh, on the need of prosecution. We were very involved in the lobby when we had the West Ray Bill adopted, of having prosecutors elected, or selected. Because I don't know if many of you know that when, a, when an employer is fined, that fine is a, is a tax write-off as a cost of doing business. We've been lobbying so that the, the under, and to have the change to the Criminal Code of Canada. I'm very pleased to say that we do have a designated prosecutor in this province now. Um, has been designated in June. 
I'm not saying that we've, made, we've crossed the finish line because we have to be sure that it's going where it should be going. We've been through the advisory council, been working and, and, and trying to ensure that that prosecutor uh, is involved, and, and right now that's part of the work uh, objective for them, is to train ins our inspectors to, when they go into a workplace, because what's been happening in the past when a worker's been killed, the police are the first on site. The police go in and don't, if they don't see it as a normal criminal activity, they leave. And the evidence is left unguarded, unsecured. We're trying to get our inspectors trained so that they can go in those workplaces and do, and when they do the, their inspection, they're doing it with a forensic eye as well, so that we're protecting the, the information and the evidence. There was a, a one employer found guilty, it was announced, uh, I think the first week or last week, been on the road, I'm not even sure which, week, which day it was now, but uh, found guilty of two violations that, uh, that led to the death of a worker. And the, the sentence hearings will be coming up. We're hoping that the prosecutor is going to be involved in that one. We're not sure if there is. There is one charge laid under the criminal code in this province, whether it, uh, no other provinces have been able to get one to the courts yet. But we believe that the, and, and we believe it's a great deterrent by having this legislation. But it's only a great deterrent if the prosecutions push forward. We're not out there being bloodthirsty, looking to have people thrown in jail. But if you have an employer, and there, and there was one employer uh, that uh, was involved in two fatalities, and all they did was go bankrupt, start off under another name, and had another worker killed a, a year or so later. We need those workers that are negligent, or those employers or, that are negligent in occupational health and safety, to be the same as it is on the highway laws. If, if I drink and drive and kill somebody, then I could be charged for criminal negligence causing death. That's what we want under occupational health and safety. If they're blatantly opposing and, and not following the Occupational Health and Safety Act, then they sh and found guilty, they should be doing time in jail. Because that's the only way we're gonna change, we're doing wonderful things on, on awareness, wonderful things on culture, or on, on training, and but without the third card of, of enforcement it's not going to it, we're not going to turn the culture around the way we need it hopefully we never have to do the prosecution to send somebody to jail the threat of it alone will be enough to, to get the play that we need on the table because we have 19 workers in a province of this size is far 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 one worker is too many but when you're getting 19 and 20, and, and we've had as high as 30 odd in recent years without Western, workers killed in a province of this size, we got a major problem. If that was a disease, they'd be bending all over the place because of an epidemic. And we've got an epidemic of, of lack of concern for, for workers. We're going through a review, there's a couple issues that we're trying, and we're, we're urging act, all activists uh, to support, is trying to get some changes said in with the workers' comp coverage and, and accident prevention. We're working closely with them and urging them to work with unions. <coughs> we're very concerned that there's an, a, a major issue that's only mentioned once in the report and we're fighting for it and that's mental health. That's a major, major problem in many of our workplaces. And it's an issue that people tend to try to sweep under the carpet and we can't allow it. We need universal, universal coverage for workers' compensation. We've been fighting for years for it. We need every workplace to be covered under workers' compensation so workers have that protection. Interesting enough, when I talk about government, the highest level of accidents and injuries in the province is in social services and health care. Almost over double the nearest other industry. And that's a government. Friends and brothers and sisters, a worker should never be fearful of going to work and with the risk that they may not leave, wondering if, if this is the day I die. Today, we clearly mourn with our friends, or with the families of friends, the workers who didn't make it home last year. But we must also use these days to, to continue, or for, to harden our resolve to campaign for better and stronger enforcement of occupational health and safety legislation. Every workplace fatality is preventable. 
So we, you know, we rededicate ourselves to calling on government at all levels and employers to take to be more proactive in, work, in reducing workplace injuries. Awareness, education, and, and training are crucial. A very serious part of the, the, what's needed to make the change. But government's responsibility is the key. We need government to enforce the legislation, both the, the Occupational Health and Safety Act and the Criminal Code of Canada. Basically, the last message that we leave is that we must stop the killing and enforce the law. And that's been our call to this government. So thank you very much.